Dan and Anna, do you want to join us? Dan Abel is a senior researcher at the Center for Responsive Politics. He's responsible for overseeing the center's databases, tracking lobbying activity, and the revolving door. He joined the center in 2004 and has also specialized in monitoring political action committees and the personal finances of government officials. Anna Masolia is CRP's nonprofits and FARA researcher. She works on the Foreign Lobby Watch project as well as CRP's data on politically active nonprofits and other non disclosing groups. Dan and Anna? Good morning. Uh, so we'll walk through the uh, Foreign Lobby Watch website for a few minutes here. In 2017, the Center for Responsive Politics launched a tool designed to make exploring documents filed under the Foreign Agents uh, Registration Act easier and more reliable than the limited tools available from the Department of Justice. However, all of the information in those reports was still locked up in PDF images, limiting the possibilities for analysis. But we recently unveiled the new Foreign Lobby Watch section of Open Secrets, which recenters the focus on the foreign interests that spend and make money influencing policy and opinion in the US. And today we'll spend a few minutes walking through the additions and improvements to the website. Uh, from the home page, you get a snapshot of the different ways to look at foreign spending, including the top line numbers, like the fact that over half a billion dollars were spent during 2017 and the first half of 2018. We also see here the top spending countries and foreign principles. Uh, that is the groups that are actually spending the money. So let's start by looking at a country. And since they turned out to be the biggest, let's take a look at South Korea. On their profile, we get their total spending divided out. So you can see how much was spent by the government versus how much was spent by companies, nonprofits, and individuals as well as a comparison of the total spending by year. We also get the top few groups from this country that spent money, uh, but to see the full list, we'll choose the Foreign Principles tab up at the top. Looking at that full list of Foreign Principles, we get to see which organizations based in South Korea spent the money, uh, dominated by the government in this case, uh, then moving to registrants, we can see who those groups hired. Often they quote unquote hire uh, groups that are either arms of or related to the client or foreign principal. And that's why you see more than just law firms and public relations firms and consultants here. Uh, in this case, the Trade Promotion Center and the National Tourism Organizations, which are controlled by the government, uh, turned out to be the main sources of South Korean government spending. It should be noted that a lot of the money we find in FARA is spent on promotion of tourism and encouraging investment and trade. So we can't assume all this money is lobbying in the traditional sense of trying to convince government officials uh, to make certain policy decisions, though that type of activity is also included and common. Uh, lastly, our power users can get into the actual documents. Since we have just taken one piece out of the reports to show you the money, there's still lots of other information uh, in the reports that you can get by looking at the actual filings, including more information on lobbyists and personnel, issues, contacts with the government, uh, and details about advertisements and correspondence and all kinds of additional informational materials. So now we're looking at the top registrants, which are often referred to as foreign agents. These are the groups that get hired to do the work in the United States. And here again, you get rankings allowing us to see who brought in the most money trying to influence on behalf of foreign interests. Let's check out a law firm that is a big player in both the Lobbying Disclosure Act world, uh, which is largely, though not completely, concerned with domestic organizations lobbying, uh, but is also a major representative of foreign clients, Aiken Gump. Uh, again, we have a summary page that gives you a snapshot of how much they made from fair related work and who their big clients are. In this case, uh, so far this year, it's been the UAE, which was involved in an ongoing embargo of Qatar last year that also included Saudi Arabia and Egypt and a few other countries. 
In 2017, their biggest client was the government of British Columbia in Canada, which made Canada their top country. Moving through, we can see all the other countries they represented and the specific foreign principles from those countries. Clicking on any of these names in the list, of course, will take us to a profile that shows more detail uh, about the activity. Without additional data entry, the lobbyist information we have uh, is limited to new filings, either when, a, when someone gets a new client or if they're entirely new to FARA. But we do know which uh, registrant or foreign agent they worked for. So here we provide, and we also here provide a link to the domestic lobbying data when we were able to find a match for that person. So that's what a foreign agent, which uh, is hired to do the actual work in the US looks like. Now we arrive at the actual groups spending the money on influence. Uh, and as we add just a couple more years in the, in the near future, this should show an uptick in the number of filers since 2016. The number of new registrations has increased sharply and uh, recent reporting indicates that law firms are reporting seeing a lot more uh, inquiries about FARA compliance as well. So we expect to see uh, an upward trend. Uh, we mentioned earlier the Qatar embargo, so let's take a look at who they are paying to work in the US. Uh, they spent almost $13 million last year and already have a few million spent in the first part of this year. We can also see that they spread their money around to quite a few firms. And different firms have different specializations, so that may be part of that strategy. You'll see these uh, question marks near key terms or concepts that may be confusing or require more explanation. And these will link to our background page where you'll find uh, more detail about the ins and outs of how the FARA universe works, information about the law, who has to file, as well as uh, some details of how we collected this data and used it. We started this project a year ago with just a robust search tool and that remains an excellent way to dig into your FARA research. All of the available documents stretching back to 1938 are searchable, and we provided full search of full text search of them through optical character recognition. Uh, you can use any one of these boxes, or you can use them in combination uh, to lim limit your results to a certain time period or country as well. For example, searching weapons and Saudi Arabia turns up a number of documents uh, and will show you a bit of context for the text that appears around your keyword so you can determine the validity. Uh, we also maintain a page of the latest documents which is updated several times a day from the DOJ uh, website. And these, this shows the documents that have been filed in the last few days. So come back frequently to see what's new. Another reason to return frequently is that we have a number of improvements planned. We'll be both keeping up with entering newly filed reports as well as working our way backward over the next few months to allow comparisons across a longer stretch of years. We will also be mashing up this data with the Lobbying Disclosure Act data uh, since many foreign companies take advantage of the option to file under that less rigorous system and then they end up bypassing uh, the FARA filings altogether. So linking these two up in one place will give a more complete view of both government and corporate spending coming from a country, or at least as complete as the disclosures allow us. Uh, in addition, we'll be adding ways to break spending down by industry, providing downloads of select data, and doing research and reporting on the data. All of this is aimed at making the Foreign Agent Registration Act filings more accessible and understandable to journalists, scholars, and the public.